Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer. Welcome to this video on arc length. We're going to just go through the concept at first, try to figure out why the formula is what it is, and we'll do a couple of very simplistic examples. All right, first up, the idea is you have a function and we like to measure how long the road is if the road fits the function. If you were to walk from some point A to point B on the curve, how long of a distance have you traveled? So like with other derivations, what we do is we take the integral and we chop it into subintervals. x1, x2, generically, xk minus 1, xk, keep on going until you get to b. And we simplify things by, by first approximating. So instead of traveling along the curve, we can simplify things by traveling along the polygonal path, polygon path, straight lines. If you were to add up those distances, it would be a bad approximation because we don't have that many of them. But the main idea, of course, is that the more approximate, the more intervals you have, the better your approximation gets. Let's take a look at this one in particular, the xk minus 1 xk interval. So I have two points there on the curve. And I am going to make a right triangle and find the hypotenuse length. The point on the left has x coordinate xk minus 1. The y coordinate is f of that. The point on the right has x coordinate xk and the y coordinate is f of that. Distance between two points. Or Pythagorean theorem, the, uh, the leg that's horizontal is the difference between the x's. The leg that's vertical is the difference between the y's. And you use the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, whatever you need. And so we have um, leg squared plus leg squared is hypotenuse squared. So hypotenuse is the square root of that. All right, now we got to get a little bit clever here. We got to go back to first semester calculus and um, throw in a theorem called the mean value theorem. Mean value theorem is based off of having the derivative of a function, the slope of the tangent line being equal to the slope of the line by connecting two endpoints somewhere, guaranteed that there exists somewhere where the tangent line slope is equal to the secant line slope. Taking this um, left-hand secant line slope equal to the right-hand tangent line slope, what we're going to do is multiply by the denominator just to get it all on one level. And what we notice is that the the difference between the f of xk and f of xk minus 1 can be rewritten then with this guy instead. So we're going to replace the second. Um, let's see here if I can highlight. Laser point. Okay. We're going to replace the, uh, the second guy here in parentheses. And from the mean value theorem, we find out that we can replace it by the derivative at xk star times the same xk minus xk minus 1. The xk star is just someplace in between that is guaranteed by the mean value theorem. So that gets replaced. Maybe I should have color coded it. It would have been a little better. And then we have these two terms. Both of them have this xk minus xk minus 1 quantity squared. And so if we factor that out, or maybe rename it, call it delta x, the change in x. Then um, with it being squared and underneath the square root, when we factor it out, um, here's what's going to happen. We're going to take out the xk minus xk minus 1 quantity squared, factor it out. You'll be left with 1 plus the derivative squared. And we can take that out um, underneath from underneath a radical. Let's get rid of this laser pointer. Okay, great. And so then, uh, yeah, we then have an approximation to just that one length. Okay. And, well, now that's the exact length, I'm sorry. And it's an approximation to the curve. It's off, okay. It's definitely not equal to that same length. But it's an approximation. And we're going to move to the other ones. There's there's five of them here. We're going to add up the finitely many of these guys. And recognize we have a bad approximation. 
And so we want to uh, let the number of subdivisions go to infinity, subintervals, let them go to infinity, making the width of each subinteral go to zero. And so what we have in our hands is an integral, a Riemann sum. So if you ever wonder where the arc length formula comes from, now you have it. It's the integral from A to B of the square root of 1 plus F prime squared. Then we just break it down in pieces. Let's take the derivative first. Let's square it. Let's add 1. Let's take a square root. And then let's integrate. All right, so that's the derivation of the formula. And now let's see a couple of, uh, hopefully, yeah, really quick examples, um, rather on the easy side, something you wouldn't see on a, any kind of a quiz or an exam. Um, but let's just, to get our feet wet, let's take a look at two examples. Uh, first up, we have this guy, y equals 1 plus 2 thirds of x minus 1 to the 3 halves. And we're interested in that for x is between 1 and 4. I don't have a graph, but there's a curve here, and we're walking along this curve between x equals 1 and 4. When x is 1, the y value is 1. Um, and then when x is 4, I guess you have some other non-standard uh, y value there. But anyway, we have the formula. Let's break it down into steps. You have your function. Step 1, take the derivative. You'll bring down the 3 halves. You'll take it to the 1 half. But the 3 halves and the 2 thirds, they'll cancel each other. So step 1 is take the derivative. Here also I have in that animation is step 2, where you square the derivative. Essentially, the derivative is the square root of x minus 1, so the square of it is just x minus 1. This is almost too easy what's going to happen here, because in step 3, we're, we're, our job is to add 1. Well, if it's underneath, a, I mean, if it's, a, if it's a minus 1 and you add 1, they cancel out. Step 4 is to take the square root, and therefore, the thing that we are integrating in the formula is just the square root of x. That's almost too easy. I, I, I don't really want you to think that it's ever going to be that easy, but there it is. x to the 1 half from 1 to 4, um, real quick, it's x to the 3 halves with a 2 thirds, put a 4 in, put a 1 in. The 4 to the 3 halves is just an 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. 2 thirds of 7, 14 thirds. Pretty straightforward. Too easy, though. Let's go to the next one. We'll consider this one maybe medium. <laughs> easy medium, somewhere in between. Uh, there's your function. Looks a lot like the last one. It has this two-thirds, but the inside is different. Last time the inside was x minus 1. Now the inside is 1 plus x squared. We have the formula. We know what it is. And step one is to take the derivative. Bring down the three-halves. It cancels with the two-thirds. You take that guy to the one-half, so that's your square root part. But then what, what um, most students forget about is the chain rule taking the derivative of the inside function. We didn't have to worry about it in the last question because the inside function had a derivative of 1. And so this is our derivative. It's our job in step 2 to square it. So don't forget, though, you have to square the outside. And, of course, squaring the radical there, you just get what's underneath. It's at this point, like, you kind of want to add some intermediate steps before you jump in between, you know, steps. And so we want to have basically a, a distribution. Um, yes, we should add one. Yes, we should take the square root. That's what these next steps say. But maybe we should have like uh, just distributed and we should have done some things like kind of outside of the radical just to simplify it. Add in some simplifying steps. So if you distribute the 4x squared, you end up with 4x squared and then 4x fourth. And if you do a reordering, it looks like that. And then you get stuck. You say, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be able to integrate this? And it all relies on your algebra because it's it's recognizing that this guy factors. I know it's a fourth degree, and fourth degrees are generally, you know, hard to factor. But no, it's it's like a quadratic. It factors. Uh, 2x squared plus 1 times another 2x squared plus 1. That's what this guy is. It's a perfect square. Underneath a radical, that's, that's, that's great. And so now those two parts cancel out. You're just integrating 2x squared plus 1. You're doing it uh, from x equals 0 to 3. Uh, I'll let you finish that out. The answer should be 21. Okay. We'll come back with some difficult examples in the next video. Maybe, maybe one video per example. They're so involved. And uh, the algebra gets a bit messy. This whole recognizing what's underneath as a perfect square, uh, it'll be important. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below. Um, and uh, I'm here to help. I'm happy to help you. Um, all right. Thank you.